This was another bad loss for the 76ers. You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 76ers. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Pick, the easiest and most exciting way to play fairly daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Look, y'all, my name is Keith Pompey. I'm one of the co-hosts of Locked On 76ers. And today I just want to dissect last night's game. It was a tough one. The 76ers lost to the Sacramento Kings. It was a game where you kind of knew it was going to be tough. But it was also one of those things where the Sixers played well the night before. And you thought maybe let's see what they're going to do. But instead, they lost 108 to 96. in the game that was really more lopsided than the final score indicated. It was a game where... Tyrese Maxey didn't get any help. A game where Tobias Harris went back and struggled again, had more shooting woes. It was a game where in the third quarter, through three quarters, the 76ers had more turnovers than assists. Yes, it was a bad game. But the thing is, the thing that I really want to talk to you guys about in the first uh, segment, is I want to break down Tyrese Maxey's performance and how he didn't get any help. The second segment, I got to talk about Tobias Harris. I have to. Um, And then the third segment, you know, we'll talk about the turnovers. We'll talk about some other things. Um, You know, this was the 76ers' 31st different starting lineup of the season as well. So, you know, there's a lot of things to um, talk about. But the thing about this game is Tyrese Maxey scored 29 points, right? Tyrese had 29 points in this game, right? He had 29 points on 10 for 16 shooting. He was five for seven on threes. He made four of six uh, three throws. Um, He had uh, three rebounds, two assists. He had two turnovers. He was a minus 15. Now, he had 29 points. Now, 26 of those 29 points came in the first half. He shot one for three in the whole second half. Now, he played 15 minutes in the second half, but he shot one for three in in the second half. Now, he finished with 34 minutes and 30 seconds in the game, right? But from the gate, y'all, from the beginning, you knew that this game was going to be uh, weird. It was set up to be weird, right? Um, It was one of those things where I remember, you know, I said at one point, someone outside of Maxi is going to have to make a shot for the Sixers, right? And that was early on because, you know, Maxi scored their first five points on two for four shooting. At that time, his teammates were a combined 0 for 4. Now, the Kings led at that point 13 to 5 with 7 minutes and 37 seconds left in the first quarter, right? So you're doing that. At one point, the Kings led 13 to 10. Now, granted, the 10 points were maxi. So it was like 13 Kings, 10 maxi. Then it was 15, 13, 
the Philadelphia Maxis. Like Maxi scored 13 points. And then it got to the point where I just start calling the team the Philadelphia Maxis because he scored the first 16 points, right? So it was the Philadelphia Maxis 16, the Kings 15 points, right? And, you know, after the Sixers All-Star buried a three to put, um, um, you know, to put the Sixers up with four minutes left in the first quarter. Like, again, he scored all 16 of his team's points at that juncture on six for nine shooting. His teammates were 0 for 6. Now, then Paul Reed comes down. And he scores on a reverse dunk. That was the first nine Maxi point. Now in the first quarter, Maxi ended up with 21 points, right? So you look at it, he had 19 points at one time. He accounted for, and at that point, when he had 21 points, right? Maxi accounted for 84% of the Sixers points in the first quarter at that one point. Now so it was just it was crazy y'all i'm just going to tell you it was it was one of those things that it was just crazy at one point maxi was shooting seven for 11. his teammates were shooting five for 21. the kings were leading 38 to 36. you know it was uh it was tough the kings ended up leading 60 to 48 in the first half with Maxi getting 26 points. I mean, it was just tough for him. It was it was just one of those things where you look at it and you see it, and the guy just ran out of gas. Not only did he run out of gas, he was tired, but the Kings kind of knew, like, okay, we're going to start blitzing him. We're going to do stuff, get the ball out of his hands. He's going to, you know, do this. We're going to force somebody else to beat us. And they the Sixers really didn't do it. And to me, the game was all but decided in the first half, right? Because the Sixers need more than him to score the ball. You know what I mean? Like I said, he scored the game high 29 points on 10 for 16 shooting, including making, you know, five or seven threes. Um, you know, he, he ran out, the, out of gas after the halftime intermission before they didn't get any help. Um, and I told you how it was obvious from the start. And he was sensational in the first half. But his teammates have to find a way to get involved, right? Especially when teams adjust defensively while Maxi runs out of gas. Like, like I said, he had three points. He had uh, three points on one for three shooting in his second half. And they just kept blitzing and blitzing and blitzing and blitzing. And it was just nothing they could do. Nothing. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, believe it or not, not having Kelly Oubre. Now, of course, we all know not having Joel Embiid is huge. But not having Kelly Oubre, a guy who was averaging 19.6 points over the last 12 games, you know, he's a guy who can cut. He's a guy who can hit threes. And it takes some of the pressure off of him. They didn't have him. And, you know, it just got ugly at times with the Sixers. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was the way they were playing, the things that they were doing. It was ugly. It was bad. And, um, you know, it's a shame because everybody is going to make it seem like it was the last game of the road trip. They were weary. They were tired. Look, I ain't miss me on that. And the reason why I'm saying miss me on that is because, yes, I get it. They were on a road trip. But this was probably one of the best back-to-backs that you can ever have aside from being at home. And the reason why I'm saying that is, home I'm saying, they were in L.A. in California. Now, what happens is it was a 12 o'clock game, we're talking about on Sunday. So everything is over. They do their media availabilities. What, what do you do? At the latest, 5 o'clock. You fly to Sacramento. That's an hour flight, right? You fly to Sac. You check into the hotel. You get a good night's sleep. And then you got a game the next night, right? That's no different from them practicing in Philly and then flying somewhere 
to go to a game, like flying to like Cleveland or 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 Chicago. I mean, less than Chicago, right? So, you know, what I'm not really. It was a lot of excuses of how tired they were. This and that. Hey, they rest Nico Batum the night before, and they rest Kyle Lowry the night before. So. I'm sorry. I'm not one of those people who's saying, oh, it was a schedule. Nah, nah, nah. They just didn't hit shots. My man didn't get, talking about Maxi, didn't get any help from the people that he needed to get help from. So, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, uh, they didn't do this or, 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 or that, you know, da, 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 people want to make excuses. Nah, man, like, again, like I said, miss me on that stuff because that ain't the reason why they lost. It don't have nothing to do with the schedule. It had a lot to do with uh, execution, effort, and just missing shots. You know, now, if the one thing that you want to say about Maxi is sometimes maybe he needs to look for his teammates a little bit more, um, but at the same time, if they were missing shots, you got to score. And that's what he did. He took it in his own hands and he tried to score, right? Prize Pick is America's number one fantasy, fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than two to six player stats projections and watch the winnings roll in. Look, y'all, it's demon times on prize pick. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to a hundred times your money with as little as four correct picks. Players and stat types you're selecting highlight your winnings from prize picks, right? How fun and simple the experience of playing the game. So there's a lot that you can do, man. I'm telling you. So this is what y'all need to do. You got to go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100, right? I'm going to repeat this. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first uh, deposit match up to $100. I'm telling y'all. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. I ain't messing around with (laughs) y'all. So definitely do it today. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for your every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports today brings you a can't-miss analysis, opinion, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon TV channels app part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm telling you, your team every day. Now, here's the thing. We talk about Tobias Harris, and I know sometimes it's hard to get in the rhythm, right? And, you know, the first game, what I mean by the first game is when they played the Lakers. They played the Lakers on Friday. Tobias shot six for 18. He struggled a little bit in the first quarter. And in the second quarter, he came out and and shot better. But then in the second half, they all shot horrible. So 
he had a he had a, a good point standpoint, right? But he shot six for eighteen. But I like the way he was playing D. Now, granted, he played LeBron. LeBron was getting the shots. But let's face it, LeBron, I know LeBron is the oldest player in the league, but LeBron is going to get shots, right? I love, Tobias had some steals. He had 13 rebounds, which was a season high. I thought he played well. Take away the, the shooting. I thought he played well. Okay. So then Sunday comes. Tobias shot the ball well. He had 24 points. This was his best performance since when they played the, um, the Dallas Mavericks on like March the 3rd. His best performance. He had 28 points that game, and that came a game after he scored 31 to 30 against Charlotte, right? That's Charlotte. But against the Mavs, Tobias was balling. So, he has, you know, so he had that game. Then he had the one against the Clippers. Now, the thing is, the common thing is the Clippers can't stop nobody, nor can the Dallas Mavericks, right? So they go to sack. And Tobias, ooh, he shot five for 15. He was like three for 13, like at the half. The, you know, the third quarter. Um, yeah, he was for the third quarter because he was two for nine at the half. He won 0 for 5 in the first quarter. He made his first basket 43 seconds left. No, 43 seconds into the second quarter. He was missing bunnies. He was taking bad shots. And this and that, he looked like a guy out of rhythm. Now, granted, there was times where Nick Nurse took him out and he kept other people in there. But to me, they tried to feed Tobias early in this game. I mean, seriously, like Maxie was passing the ball to him, trying to get him involved. And you saw at one point where Maxie was like, yo, get it together. Like, you know, like I'm coming to you, this and that. Tobias just didn't have any rhythm. He had an off night. He didn't look good. He didn't play well. He struggled. And, you know, you look at it, and that's unfortunate because on this night, they really needed what he had to bring. They needed him. They did. They needed him to be the co-star to help Maxi out. Now, again, I told you, Kelly Oubre wasn't there. You know, Kelly Oubre is, is the guy. He, he does stuff. You know, you look at what Tobias did. Now, again, Kyle Lowry was a minus 22 in 25 minutes. That's not good. Tobias was a minus 13 in 25 minutes, right? Tobias was, like I said, he had, he had 12 points and he had eight rebounds. He had two turnovers. Um, but he was five for 15, 0 for two on threes. He made both his foul shots, but you know, he got to get it together because, and I get it, the flow of the game wasn't there, whatever. But initially, early on, they made a conscious effort of giving him the ball and trying to get him involved, and it just didn't work out like he just couldn't make a shot. Um, and then Maxi start doing what he did, like I said, and then it was like out of whack because he wasn't getting the ball at one point. But he did have nine shots in the first half. Nine shots in the first half, but he shot two for nine, just missing stuff. And then, you know, the game got out of hand and it start making stuff. So, you know, two for nine. So he was what? He was three for three for six in the second half, right? Which is better, but the game, in my opinion, was over in the first half. Like the game was was it was basically done and over with in the first half. So they got to get more production from him. Now I expect him to bounce back against the Clippers. The Clippers don't play D. So I expect Tobias to bounce back against them. 
but it's also one of those things where, you know, they just got to come to play, man. They got to come out and be locked in and, 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 and do everything that he has to do, right? Just come out, be locked in, and do what, what you have to do. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be it's, – it's, I don't know. Like, they need him. They need him. It's going to be tough on Wednesday. Be, just like I think it's going to be tough – when they go to Cleveland, because Cleveland is going to really want to prove that, hey, like, I know y'all got us these other games, but we're better than that. So everything is going to be uh, tougher for them, but they need to bias. They can't win without him, in my opinion. You need him. You do. You need him to play well. You definitely do. You need him to play well to win, right? So – I want to talk to y'all about BetterHelp, right? This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Give long, give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA to get your way to being your best self, right? You know, sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. It's important that you let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to tell you how I really feel about some things, right? You might even be thinking about the same thing. You know, the thing that we all need to understand is that, like, stress in life is bigger than if the Sixers win or lose or if the Lakers win, whomever you like, the New York Knicks, whatever, the Eagles, you know, all that stuff. It's like things are bigger than that. So therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us, like I said, have bigger problems than your favorite sports teams. So it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible, and suited for your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get 10% off your first month. That's better help. H E L P dot com slash locked on NBA. I'm telling y'all, do it today, people. Definitely do it today. And guess what? You're going to enjoy it. You're definitely going to enjoy it. So go ahead and do it. Do that thing, right? Now, I want to talk to y'all about. I want to talk to y'all about um, the Sixers, like, turning the ball over and this and that. It was crazy because they actually had more turnovers than as assists through three quarters. I mean, literally, they had more turnovers than assists through three quarters, Right. And initially in the first half, you know, and you get it, like Tyrese had to score. He had to do whatever. But they had nine turnovers to seven assists in the first half in large part because no one outside of Maxi could make shots. Through three quarters, they had 14 turnovers and 12 assists. They ended up finishing with 18 assists and 15 turnovers. But their improved fourth quarter play had a lot to do with the sisters taking advantage of extended garbage minutes. I mean, that's what it was. It was kind of like the other team was chilling, relaxing. Sixers was putting in dudes who basically wanted to get some minutes, like, you know, in garbage time. And guess what they were doing? They were balling, you know. But like I said earlier, like one could argue that, that the Sixers' offensive shortcomings could have been impacted you know, without um, Kelly, without having Kelly um, Oubre, you know, Jr. on the floor, right? The small fort was sidelined with left shoulder soreness after taking a hard fall in Sunday's victory. As a result, like I said before, the Sixers started their 31st different starting lineup of Nick Batum, Tobias Harris, Mo Bamba, Kyle Lowry, and Maxi. right? 
So, um, you know, so that's where it was. But at the same time, not saying that lineup was bad, but the problem is, it's just you have a guy like Kelly who's just been balling and doing things. And they get him the ball. He knocks down shots. Tobias was struggling a little bit. A lot of them were struggling. It was bad. I mean, even campaign, like, you know, campaign's a guy who basically gets you points and stuff like that off the bench. And, you know, he ended up with, uh, he, he ended up with eight points on three for 10 shooting. Right now, DJ Wilson, shout out to DJ Wilson. DJ Wilson was on his first day of a 10 day and he played 13 minutes and 57 seconds. Now he came in in the third quarter and hit two threes on back-to-back possessions. Like, whoa, okay, player. Okay, I see you. But he ended up with 10 points on four for six shooting overall. He was a plus four, right? Ricky Council, the fourth. Now, you know Ricky. We all know Ricky. He brings it whenever he comes in. He had 10 points on two for five shooting, right? But – you know, for the most part, you know, a lot of guys was getting garbage points. Like Paul Reed, I give it to him. Paul Reed had eight points on three for five shooting. KJ Martin had four on two for six. Buddy Hield, whoo, man, this was a, a clunker for him. Buddy Hill had seven points on three for nine shooting. He was 0 for six on threes. Not a good one. Not a good one, right? Not a good one at all. Now, Kyle Lowry, you know, Kyle had three points he started on one for four shooting, all three pointers. Nick Batum, he had zero points. He missed his three shot attempts. Two of them were with with uh were threes. You know, Maxie, it's funny, like Maxie made five of seven threes. His team combined for six three his teammates combined for six threes without right six threes on they were six for 27 that's not good it's not good not good at all right so now we'll see what your sixers do wednesday when the clippers come to town so we'll we'll get a better idea now the thing about the clippers now i was hyping that win up right hyping it up thinking like, okay, the Sixers did something. And who knows? It was a good win, right? You know, that we know the Sixers are struggling. But then I get up the next morning, and it's something I should have known. But I get up the next morning, I'm looking at Sports Center, and they're telling me that the Clippers dropped to one and eight. After that loss to the Sixers, the Clippers dropped to one and eight against teams that last and, and again their last nine games against teams with a winning record so i'm like whoa that ain't good right so you look at it and then they lost again last night they lost to the indiana pacers so what that is is <laughs> they so in their last 10 games, they dropped to one and nine. And they struggled mightily at home recently, right? So I think the Sixers may, they may, they may be fortunate. They may be fortunate. Yeah, so like they lost one, two, three, four, four, six, four, six. Uh, seven, eight. So they lost six of their last nine games, right? Six of their last nine games. They ain't, that's not good, man. So, you know, this could be what the Sixers need, a quality, you know, get a win against this team. But they struggled. And they got it to they gotta get Tyrese Maxey some help. You know, hopefully Joel returns back soon. But they gotta get Maxey some help. They can't keep doing this. They can't do keep doing this. But look, y'all, like I said, 
I want to thank you all for making Locked On 76ers the first listen of your day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, right? So just make sure you keep doing and logging and listening to us. And then also, I want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channel app. So I'm telling y'all, do it today, people. Really, definitely do it today. Have a great one, a great Tuesday, blessed week, and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Deuces.